People ask me about retirement, when am I going to retire? And my answer is very simple. Uh, you're a long time dead, got plenty of time to rest then, so while you're alive, why not try to do something that's useful to other people? My gorgeous wife, Maureen, who I met and married, uh, she died tragically in 1991. She and I used to feed the homeless together. And so when I lost her, uh, I started the Maureen A. Abbott Love Thy Neighbor Fund. Love is what we do, love is what we are, love is what we're all about. When I was in politics, I was fighting for the little guy. When I was 10 years old, I wrote a poem against capital punishment. I spent 50 years of my life fighting for civil rights. I grew up in Brookline, Massachusetts, and uh, I went to the University of Pennsylvania just shortly after Pearl Harbor. Uh, I decided they couldn't win the war without my help, so I boarded a bus, went to Camp Meade, Maryland. Uh, I moved to Florida in 1970. The homeless were the underdogs, they were the bottom of the totem pole, and I felt they needed somebody to champion their cause. To me, the very important part of our program is the Lovely Neighbor Culinary Skills Training Program. Uh, we have graduated almost 400 students from it. Uh, the students are always homeless people who are temporarily housed in uh, the shelters in Broward County. You can come in without any experience whatsoever, never having been in a kitchen before in your life. We try to be compassionate with them. We don't treat them as regular students. We know they learn at different levels. You have to be a psychologist in a class like this. We've done the Wednesday beach feeding for 22 years. We make everything in a casserole because a lot of the homeless have dental problems, they're missing teeth, and the teeth they have are not too secure. But we serve at every meal two entrees, which nobody else does. We have never run out of food in 22 years. Four years ago, Thanksgiving was the last time it rained on us. I have never seen a more grateful group of people in my life than our homeless friends, and they are friends. We treat them like they're honored guests when we feed them. It's not a one-man job for sure. It takes a lot of people to make it go well. We have probably 10 or 12 people who handle the feeding, and uh, it is so well organized that we can feed 200 people in under an hour. Uh, I highly recommend standing on your feet helping other people rather than sitting in a wheelchair waiting to die. I live uh, right off McNabb Road. There's a retirement home across the street. Day and night, ambulances come and go from that retirement home because these people are just waiting to die. They have nothing else to do. So we are available. Anytime anybody wants to do something useful, we'd love to have them join us. Our only interest is the child. You have the department on one side wanting one thing and the parents on the other side wanting something else. We want what's in the best interest of the child. Well, I was an account executive for a, a woman's sports warehouse. We lived in Manhattan. My husband was very ill. The doctor said he could not stay in the cold weather anymore. I was fortunate. I feel like I, I I'm just giving back. How I found my second passion or career, unpaid career, <laughs> that I was going to Brown Community College and this um, professor I had there, he asked me to try to go to mental, to, to work with mental health, which I did. The guardian ad litem, we're the ones that um, are there to make sure that Whatever the ch child needs in court is, whatever is ordered by the court, we have to try to make sure that it's happening for the child. From the Guardian ad litem program, who is a state, is a state program, um, there's many things that they can give to the children, and Handy fills in the gaps. And uh, our mission is to embrace them, educate them, and empower them. We have a building where they come and they have 
they're educated. So this class is about actually planning your life. Some of the children, young adults or children, have nobody else. The, um, a lot of their parents have left them for many years ago and uh, they feel like Handy is their home. They come here after school. We're gonna do math. Ready? How many hours in a day? 24. 24. I've seen one boy who came in that didn't even speak when he came in. And uh, after we, he was at Handy for a while, he went, he was a page in Congress. I've been a guardian for 27 years. Maybe I'm helping them a little bit. That's what my feeling is. And that's my passion. And it always will be, till the day I die. If I live to be 100 and I could do it, I will be doing it at 100. You hear people saying, gee, I don't know what to do with myself. Well, you see people with, with wheelchairs that are out helping other people. And you see people, some of these veterans who've lost their legs running in races and stuff. Don't tell me that you can sit there and say, I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know what to do. If you want, just ask me. I'll find something for you. At Horses in the Handicap, we bring youngsters and adults to facilitate their movements where in a normal day they don't have the opportunity. When they get on the horse, their body moves like a human being's body should move. We have many different afflictions. MS, Down syndrome, you name it, we have it. I got involved with Horses in the Handicap as a result of a meeting in North Miami. One of our members invited a young man to speak to us. He attributed everything he achieved in life to a program called the Horses and the Handicapped. And at the time he was speaking to us, he was graduating from Berry University with his bachelor's degree and he was competing with able-bodied individuals in equestrian events. And after he finished speaking, and I told Dr. Will Blackman, Dr. Will, point me in that direction. I want to get involved with an organization that can do that for an individual. And I worked my first class as a sidewalker the first Saturday in January of 1991. And my first student was Erica. I love you, man. <laughs> oh, you know something? I appreciate that. Erica was a real challenge. Erica was digging her nails into my wrist. I mean, it was painful, but I was macho. After about 20 minutes, Erica started petting my hand. She stopped digging her nails into my wrist, and from then, she and I have been the best of friends. A deep breath, Erica. Before I came, we had a ring over to the left here. It was just a ring. The whole purpose behind our covered arena is to increase the number of students that we serve. We hold Special Olympics in here, which we couldn't do previously because we didn't have a facility like this. It's one of our biggest problems, getting enough volunteers to work around here. Most of them are young, but we could use some older volunteers. Don't just sit at home. Find your passion. Redefine retirement. Change the world.